Well, I grew up in a small town called Beauforge. It was a coal mining town. When I had enough sense to look around as a young boy and see what was going on, I had to admire the men who worked in the mines. They had to do what they had to do, and uh, so they did it. My folks especially were very high on uh, getting a good education, taught me a lot of things about study, hard work, and everywhere I went, people uh, demanded some reasonable amount of performance, uh, and uh, there was no dog in it. In the fall of 57, October, the Russians fired Sputnik off. It scared the hell out of everybody uh, because it was the high ground. It was viewed as good for military strategy to seize the high ground. And uh, that's what they did. In Langley Field, Virginia, they were pretty ambitious guys, and they decided that the country's going to need to have a man in space. June of 58, I saw the drawing of what became a Mercury spacecraft. They asked me, would you be willing to go down there and help them? You know, it was the easiest problem to answer in my whole career, because uh, I, you know, it just seemed to be so boundless at the time, and it darn near was. Now, the United States government doesn't have a reputation for, for doing things quickly, but the Russians are already ahead of us. We can't take small steps and beat them. So we went on and did a big bite. John Kennedy asked us to land on the moon, and what he was backed up by was a number of people, like the people who started working on Mercury before anybody told them to do it. The program had such support it was like the whole country decided they were going to make this thing work. We had uh, John Glenn go into orbit, and then every flight was a real contribution to uh, getting to the moon. We had the fire. It was a shock to us. No, no one expected it. So it was a team of people. They encouraged themselves to make Apollo what it needed to be as good as it needed to be. And uh, they did that. Apollo 7 checked the vehicle, the command service module out. Apollo 8, it went in orbit around the moon. It went in orbit for 20 hours. And it was in orbit on Christmas Eve, 1968. Then we went back and got the LAM, checked it out in Earth orbit. And then we checked it out in lunar orbit on the next flight. So in four flights, we had everything done that we wanted to do for Neil's landing flight. Apollo 11, I was a flight director in the control center. I was on the shift to put him in orbit around the moon. I was really proud to be part of the, the, the lunar landing. I was proud to have a, a place for my skills in it. I was proud that I was dumb enough to volunteer to, to, to try to do this thing as, as soon as a, in a decade, as the president said. The pride that people had, the pride they had in their country was just visible. The whole country was celebrating the fact that uh, Apollo 11 and the landing on the moon went as well as it did. And it was quite a ride. It was quite a ride my whole life and the life of our son, who now works in the space program. You can choose to go into space and learn what you can do there, uh, or you can avoid it. It's right there. The moon is right there. We, we need to go back to the moon to go into space and to do a lot of very, very useful things like they're doing on the space station today and get ready for doing bigger things when we have the equipment and the technique and the technology to do it.
Like what you see? Help VIA tell more of your stories with a donation today. Become a member at wvia.org support.